Greetings, fellow carbon-based life forms. Paul Sun Young Lee here in my geeky basement, welcoming you to the fourth ever episode of Funboxing Sundays, where I basically open up a few of my geeky collectibles, do a bit of a half-ass review, and we chat. <laughs> now, for those of you who are new to this channel, thanks for tuning in and I hope you enjoy yourselves. And if you haven't already and you like what you see, please consider subscribing, hit that like button, click on that little notification bell icon so you know when new videos are loading uh, or being downloaded and yeah, enjoy yourselves. Uh, now, speaking of subscribers, we just hit a huge milestone. Well, it's a huge for me. Uh, when I first started this channel, I honestly didn't think I'd get 100 subscribers, and we just passed 10,000 subscribers. And of course, couldn't have done it without all of you out there, so thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for doing this. So let's say hello to everybody who is on right now. Woohoo! Kevin Lee, I see you there. Anton Adard, how are you? Sean P., my brother from Los Angeles, how are you? CBA Jason, Commando Vic, The Panda Magic, we have Epic Gamer, Thomas D., Farwas, uh, Farwas out there. We have Kenneth Cunningham the third, of course. Um, yeah, all the usual suspects. Thanks so much for, for joining. And uh, we got a really... Oh, I see Dan Alexander up there, the first one to comment. Um, yeah, Jinpei, how are you? Just Joel, Monkey Man, how you doing, buddy? Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all the dads who are out there. Um, there's a great quote that uh, Simon Pegg always has on Father's Day. He tweets it, and I love it because it's so apt. And it's a little risque, but he basically says, tweets out... Happy Father's Day, you motherfuckers. And I think, you know, the first time I heard that, I busted a gut laughing because it's kind of true, right? So, uh, thank you so much. Excuse the blue language on that, but it is Father's Day. I'm a dad. I'm allowed a little bit of leeway here. Um, I got something here. What What's what's going on here? Uh, the Panda Magic is asking, if it's possible, could you say hi to Dominic and Olivia? They're big fans of you. They love you on the show. Hi, Dominic. And hello, Olivia. Um, gosh. I hope you didn't hear me swear like that. Uh, the YouTube channel's not meant for kids. I mean, kids can watch it, but I mean, sorry, I swore. That was bad. Uh, but I apologize, but thank you so much. Um, thanks for watching the show, and thanks for being a big fan. I really appreciate that. Herman Tran, hey, how are you? Saying hi, Decent, what's up? Not much. It's been a great day. Uh, Father's Day was really cool. Uh, my kids let me sleep in, and by letting me sleep in, that means they slept in longer than I did, uh, which is... You know, that's that's par for the course. And uh, I got this really wicked cool book right here. Uh, I've been wanting to read this for a while, The Princess Diarist uh, by Carrie Fisher. It's a quick read, um, you know, gone too soon, but uh, it, it's it's lovely to hear her uh, read a bit of her memoirs and, and, and listen to, to who she was. Uh, and it's a lot of keen insight and a lot of fun. Uh, it's, it's a great read, so I'm very thankful for my family for getting me that. Um, Grunge Homer. Oh, thank you so much. I, I It's so nice that you think I'm inf worthy of infinite subscribers. I'll hold you to that. Because I hear you get a plaque when you get like 100K. That's what my kids tell me anyways. Um, Laura M. Hello from Pittsburgh. How are you? And uh, yeah, happy Father's Day. RMD Collective is in the house. Matthew K. Hello, Andreas. Where is Miles? Miles is outside. I got an inflatable swimming pool. One of these seven foot dealies. Uh, and uh, filled it with water, and he's been in it non-stop since we, we got it set up. So that's where he's at right now. Uh, just enjoying it. It's nice and hot outside. Ice cream truck just went by. So he's got ice cream, and he's in the pool. He's living the dream. Uh, but I'll, I'll tell him you asked for him. Uh, for him. Um, Epic Gamer. Oh, Father's Day is September 5th in Australia. But happy Father Day, Father's Day for everyone else. Well, thanks so much. Uh, <laughs> hey, Nash, how are you? Oh, Gabe Gall, happy Father's Day to you too. Uh, like I said, Sean P., the weather out here has been great, although it's supposed to rain tomorrow, of course, because baseball practice is tomorrow for, for Miles' team. So there you go. Uh, Bob Dylan, back in the house. Happy Uppa Day. We should change it to Uppa Day, shouldn't we? And then all I should get all the gifts, all of the gifts, because I'm the only Uppa. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but thank you so much for, the, for that sentiment. And thank you so much for the super chat. I'm going to keep that up there because, Bob, like I think single-handedly you are bankrolling this YouTube channel. And I really, really appreciate that. So thank, thank you for being you. Um, Descent, not having the best day. Oh, I'm so sorry, man. I'm sorry. Oh, it's, it's lovely 
to know that you think that I mean that that this this channel gives you some joy. So thanks so much. I'm sorry you had a bad day. I hope it's it'll get better. And I hope you really enjoy what we have for you. Uh, what I have for you in store today. I've got some really cool collectible things. Things I've been sitting on for a little bit. Uh, and just finding a right time to to drop it and like hey, fun boxing Sundays. That's exactly what it's about, right? Um. Yeah, Kevin Lee. <laughs> I do have a Twitch channel, and for those of you watching, uh, the Twitch channel, um, I, I'm still trying to figure out the tech behind it because I keep trying to stream video games, and I'm getting there, but I can't quite marry the get the audio levels correct, right? And I need to be able to restream. I'd love to be able to restream or simul simulcast uh, these live streams from to YouTube and Twitch at the same time and try to capture both. Uh, parties, but there's a lot of third party this and that because I'm using ecams to streamyard like an idiot. But when I use Streamyard, my camera doesn't play well uh, because it doesn't have a clean HDMI out for my over overhead cam and kind of need it and blah, 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 blah. Anyways, um, but I'm going to try to figure it out in one day. One day, I promise. Uh, I'll figure it out. Uh, and you're right, Jinpe. Carrie Fisher cuts much more than, than I ever did. Although I'm holding, I'm showing a lot of restraint. Uh, for those of you who might not know, there's an epic sort of rant I went on, uh, Toying Around's channel, uh, on a bad batch case of the Mondays a couple of weeks ago. The Leafs had just been eliminated by the Montreal Canadiens, and uh, I was in a mood. <laughs> not gonna lie, I was in a mood. So uh, I, I kind of let loose, and uh, people enjoyed it. So I'm kind of hoping Twitch will be like that for me. Like when I start to play, let that stream of consciousness out and just start cutting loose because, you know, gotta swear when you're playing video games. Um, right on. Uh, do, do, do. Nash, you're visiting your dad near Toronto. Right on, that's cool. Hello, Ashley, how are you? Happy Father's Day, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, Melissa K. Father's Day in Sweden isn't until November, so happy Father's Day today, and I wish you glad Farstag in November. I actually did, s Melissa, I was, where is it? Where is my thing? This is just for you, Melissa, and I hope I don't butcher this, but Tak forat du ik mir. Tak forat du ik mir. And I, hopefully I didn't butcher too much, but I think that's Swedish for thanks for joining. Thank you. Um, and that's just for you because you tuned in from Sweden, which is like blows my mind tremendously. Uh, Chiang's in the house, planning on my own autobiography. Happy day, happy Appa day. Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> my my memoirs would be I don't know I don't I, I don't think I've done nearly enough to to warrant uh, a memoir or an autobiography. Although I have been approached, I have been approached, and my ego is kind of like oh. Yeah, people want to hear my story, but I, I think, I don't know, it's still kind of weird. Um, Fawaz, seeing up on my screen brings me, brings me happiness. Oh, that's really cool. Thank you so much, my friend. Tommy, what's up? Shut up, Tommy. Um, pan fried, hey, pan fried noodles in the house. I need to talk to you about fixing my, my, my tech for street, for Twitch to Twitch, because you're, you're the, you're the guy, you're the dude. So I'm going to get in touch with you and we're going to chat. Uh, Kevin Lee saying hi to Chiang, not to me. That's the chat. <laughs> oh, here we go. Uh, Sana, hi. Thanks for thanks for joining. Thank you so much for joining. I'm glad you're a big fan. I'm, that makes me very happy. And uh, oh, okay, good, good. I was really nervous, Melissa K, about my Swedish because I googled it and I was listening to it and the way the spelling, of course, like a lot of languages. The spelling wasn't what I thought the pronunciation would be, and so I was really sort of like, oh, I've got to do this from Melissa, because I, I just want to do something nice for her, and uh, so I'm glad it sort of came through. Commando Vic, did you get to talk to Mark Hamill on the set? This just popped out of my head. You know what? He wasn't on, if you're talking about The Mandalorian, he wasn't on the set of The Mandalorian when I was shooting. Uh, in fact, it was such a widely kept secret, a lot of the, the, the main cast in those scenes didn't know it was going to be Mark Hamill. Uh, although Mark Hamill was in Toronto a couple of years ago shooting an episode or a couple of episodes of What We Do in the Shadows. And that was a huge secret that was kept, um, which was really cool. So that would have been the chance to meet him. But I didn't know he was in town, so there you go. Uh, Daniel. Oh, no, sorry. Dash, Dashiel. Dashiel, sorry. Hi. <laughs> AJ. Oh, thank you so much. Happy Father's Day to me. I don't know if you're a dad, so I'd say, yeah, happy Father's Day. Like, automatically you want to say, and happy Father's Day to you. But I have no idea if 
if you're a dad or, or whatnot. And so I'm not going to assume. And so I'm going to say thank you. Happy Father's Day to me because I am a dad. Um, Kevin Lee waits. So we need to do more than star. So we need to do more than star on a worldwide hit TV show and be part of the stars universe to be worthy of an autobiography. Oh, yes, <laughs> I think so. I think so. I'm still. Yeah, no. Uh, hey, Bruce L. Hi. Oh, thanks. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. I, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm glad all of you are here. I've got something really special for you. Uh, as it said in the title, now I'm learning to, to, to use uh, the titles to your advantage for YouTube uh, in order to catch people's attention, for people to discover your channel, discoverability. It's something that I've, I'm, I'm learning. And one of them is, instead of just saying the title of what the video is, uh, uh, is actually sort of putting in catchphrases of what the video is about. So Black Series, Mandalorian, Helmet right here. Uh, this came, I got this delivered, this came uh, months ago, months ago, and I just, it's been sitting on my shelf back there, uh, like, right in there, and there's a, there's a void now, but it was right there, and just sort of staring at me, and I was looking for the right time to unbox it, I really want, I ordered the, uh, the Anovos one, when it was in stock, a couple of years ago, last April, I believe, a couple of years, it feels like a couple of years, um, and it still hasn't arrived. So I was waiting to do like a simultaneous unboxing and do a comparison, but you know what? Forget it. This is Fun Boxing Sundays. This is for you. Uh, I saw in the chat previously that people were, were interested in perhaps picking up the Black Series uh, Mandalorian helmet, and I'm more than happy to to open it up and give you my honest uh, review on it. And I actually have, as well, the 40th anniversary Empire Strikes Back Boba Fett helmet back there. So we could do, if you wanted, a bit bit of a review between the two of them. Epic Gamer, whoa, that's great. Thank you so much for that donation. Happy Father's Day, Paul. What is your favorite animated Star Wars series? Except, for example, The Clone Wars, The Bad Batch, etc. That's that's a great question. Um, I, you know what, it, it's funny because the first sort of animated uh, Star Wars show that I remember seeing is droids and then Ewoks, and I really wasn't too keen on them. I didn't like them as much. And then the the Jenny Tar Tarkovsky version of the Clone Wars came out and I love the hyper stylized animation aspect of it because it was I think it was very reminiscent of, of Samurai Jack which was on at the same time the way they, they drew the figures and whatnot and uh, then the Clone Wars came out and I wasn't it took me a while to get into the Clone Wars just because they had the sort of the old serial reel introduction to like Coruscant in the you know during the Civil War and it, it, that kind of it took me a while to get into it, but then I realized that was a great sort of way to sort of fold into the stories and get exposition out of the way so you could just dive right into it. And so over the course of the Clone Wars, of course, the, the uh, of course, over the course, Clone Wars, it's been a while. Um, the, the storytelling and the weaving of the different story arcs were, were just fantastic. And then... Um, Rebels following after that. I haven't seen the Resistance, Star Wars Resistance. I really want to get into that series. Um, and and watching The Bad Batch right now, I'm being blown away every week by it um, because I love that content. It's it's really, they're really starting to uh, ramp it up. For those of you who hadn't seen the previous, the last episode of The Bad Batch, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but uh, shit gets real. It's it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So uh, what are your favorites? Let me know in the comments section. Uh, which, which animated series do all of you enjoy, if, if you enjoy the Star Wars animated series? Um, let me see. Oh, Mark. Thank you. My beard looks amazing, he says. They say. Thank you. It's, uh, it's getting there. I need to trim it, though, because it likes to, likes to shimmy to one side, right? And uh, I got a nice compliment. Somebody was like, hey, you could be like hipster Santa Claus or Asian, Asian good-looking Santa Claus. And I thought, oh, that's nice. I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. AJ is asking, are you excited? Your TV son being in a big Marvel movie, maybe up and makes a cameo. Ha ha ha. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, Descent is say, oh, I love that handle, Descent. Uh, I love how tight you are with your fans. It really shows. I hope Ontario opens up more so there can be more conventions. One of my fave con memories was meeting you and Andrew at Fan Expo. Oh, yeah. I, I You know, it's getting there. We're getting there. Uh, cases are down. There is a race kind of against the new variant that's, that's sort of uh, springing up. I think it's a Delta variant. Um, but I think the way it's just forward, I, I 
don't think we can step back anymore. We've hit, we're hitting vaccination percentages, which is great, and people are getting double vaxxed. And it really is about now, we, we all just have to really get vaccinated and stay, you know, maintain our distance and, and keep fisted, you know, with our masks and our distancing, but we're getting there and things are going to be opening up. And by next year, this time, we're going to be ready to, to do conventions again. Um, and I'm very excited about that because I, I love, I love, love, love interacting with fans. Love it. Um, they're, they're the ones that, that make us, give us everything. Uh, those of us who are in the public eye, they, they give us all that juice because if it weren't for the fans, we'd be nothing. And I, I truly believe that we need to give back. And to be at a fan expo, is a, it's a huge dream of mine to be invited there as a panelist and whatnot. And fan expo should be about the fans. And I think it's time to give back to the fans. And especially after the last couple of crappy years of, of being shut in, uh, everybody deserves that treat. And I can't wait because I would love to do the convention circuit uh, and meet everybody face to face because I'm meeting all these lovely people online through chats. And it, it'd be nice to put a face to the name. So thank you. Uh, oh, Gabe, tell your six-year-old twins, hap thank you, thank you. I was going to say, tell them happy Father's Day, but they're not fathers. Not yet. So, <laughs> uh, Tyler V, how's it going? Bruce L, you missed my appa accent. Well, maybe one day it might come out. Um, yeah, Kenneth Cunningham, the third miles, will probably be graduating high school by the time the Inova ships. They will ship, though. I'm pretty sure. It, it takes a while, but they'll get there. So I, I'm really looking forward to that, uh, that happening. Um, yeah, Ashley, you got your Black Series Mandalorian helmets. You haven't unboxed yours yet, so you're looking forward to watching me unbox. Now, are you going to be like, are you are you going to be like collecting it as mint in box and not opening it, or are you just waiting for the right time? Uh, in either case, for those of you who are wondering whether you want to drop some coin on this helmet, let's get to it. Let's open it up and uh, let's get going. All right, so here we have the the standard. I like what they've done with the boxes here with the art on it. Uh, it's I'm gonna have to I'm gonna pull out blah, pull out a bit. There you go. Uh, it's they've changed the shape of the box. I keep doing that right. So instead of just a regular rec, you know square box or whatever, they've they put a cut in it and they're doing that with the uh, it it echoes with their black series. Um, figures now six inch figures they're doing the same thing where it, it's not a, a, a rectangular boxing but they've got the same cutout with the artwork on it um there you go that's uh, of course you can see here it lights there's lights interior lights they've got the detailing on the inside uh there's a removable tactical light apparently um and um yeah i'm wondering i don't know if there's any sounds or not uh but it's a single a battery single double a battery one double A, and uh, so I'm thinking it's probably just the light, but let us find out. Okay, so we're gonna do this. Now I've already pre-cut the, the tape here to just save time because nothing more fun than watching somebody cut through tape. Uh, so I'm gonna open this up here. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, okay. So it's got another, this is just a, uh, yeah, this is just like packaging protection i guess it's so that the the box uh shape shapekeeper so it protects the the form of the box uh let's see you're gone and this lifts out Ooh. and as you can see right here what do we got we got go this is these are of course the wardings don't eat don't eat the small parts don't swallow it there's electrical elements blah 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 get rid of that and then we have the black series instruction manual right here we go and I love instruction manuals because they tell you how to do things like where to put the batteries and how to connect how to shape the helmet and how to turn it on and how to connect things so I'm gonna be looking at that and of course what did I forget to bring? I brought everything else, but like an idiot, I didn't bring a screwdriver. So I'm just gonna be back in a second. Wait, no, let's take this out first so you can at least look and see what, what is here. So, oops, there's another little package in, in here. There we go, there's a, something right there. 
and the rest of the box is empty. So I'm gonna need to get a screwdriver because I'm an idiot. You know the last the wedge helmet I didn't need it. I didn't need a screwdriver. That's why. So but of course this one I do. So I will be back in two seconds. Nothing can be easy, right? Nothing can be easy. All right, so we got stuff over here. Ooh, oh, yeah! I just ripped. I just, I just ripped. The, I'm not keeping the tissue. I'm not keeping the tissue. Right? I'm not keeping the tissue. I've ruined the, the resale value of this helmet. Wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. This is... Holy crap. It's shiny. It's so shiny. Like, this This is honestly so friggin' shiny. Uh, I'm just gonna do this here. This, this is <laughs> so shiny, it's unbelievable. Uh, like... This is this is stunning. Look at that, the paint job on this. It. I mean, I've I've seen pictures online, but they don't do this justice in person. Look at that. Holy crap! Holy crap buckets! Like this is. I can't believe it. This looks so nice. Like honestly, this looks so nice. It looks like a best. It looks like it's made out of best car. Now it is, it's plastic, right? But the paint application is stunning on it. Look at it. You can see the reflection. You can see reflective. You can see my hands reflecting in it. This is shiny new best car, right here. Um, yeah. Let's see what's in here. And ah, see this is. Here it's the uh, it's the tactical light that you can you can attach uh, to the side to the side of Mando's helmet, which is great. And that's right, uh, Mandalorian he didn't he doesn't have a rangefinder on his helmet, right? That's the one that's one of the the, the departures uh, of of his gear, or does he? No, I'm pretty sure he doesn't have a rangefinder. No, 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 he doesn't. And that that's the that's the cool way of that's his his variant is like that. Um, yes. Uh, sorry, I'm just reading through the comments right now. We need that tissue. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's ladies and gentlemen, my wife. Uh, she is uh, the best thing that's ever happened to me, truly. Uh, and uh, the mother of my children. And it's that quick, dry humor that keeps our marriage going. Thank you, honey. I love you. Um, yeah. <laughs> I did ruin it, but it's still good. We can keep it. If, it. if we tape it back together, we can use it. We just have to use a lot of tape to do that. Um, uh, yeah, Descent, you're wondering if I follow any other fandoms uh, aside from Star Wars. Okay, you're a huge comic book guy, so you both love Marvel and DC, which is awesome. Uh, I love sci-fi, so like, I, I follow Star Trek as well. Uh, original, star, classic Star Trek. Uh, the Kelvin Timeline, Next Generation, DS9, Voyager. Haven't gotten into Enterprise. I couldn't. I don't know. It was something about it, but I got to give it a rewatch. And of course, Discovery, and I'm looking forward to Strange New Worlds. Still have to finish Season 1 of Picard. Uh, but yeah, I'm a huge... That's. I mean, for me, Star Trek was my jam when I was little. Because it was, it was around. It was a serialized television program and so I could watch it all the time uh, where Star Wars was just like once every three years and this was kind of pre just before VHS hit the market so um, yeah I just uh, I still but Star Wars is 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 still my vibe to my jam and and I love it but uh, yeah I think both can coexist I love Doctor Who um, I love aliens uh, that whole thing Joel you know man we we love the the entire aliens uh, uh, quadrilogy now no there's more because there's covenant and and prometheus um there's a like that that whole subgenre blade runner uh all the classics from 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 the 80s i loved uh, and of course you know with the re-release on 4k of uh the indiana jones um quadrilogy 
now. There's more than, yeah, a quadrilogy. Is that a word even? I don't know. Uh, but that's what it is. So we're going to get back to this. Sorry, I'm just getting side scratched, side sidetracked here. Um, Decent wants to know where I purchased this. This was actually from Toys R Us. Uh, and I think EB Games had a, had a, had it on sale for a while too. You can get these in your lo usual suspects. Uh, check out Amazon, although the price might be a bit inflated. Uh, if you're in the US, it's different from in Canada. I'm in Canada, so I know in Canada where you could get, you might be able to get some of this. There's a place, uh, there's a website, Toy Snowman, toysnowman.com. Uh, they might have a few buckets, but you do a search and generally speaking, they're still available. They're not really, really hard to get right now. Uh, I know they're releasing a whole whack of uh, Black Series buckets out there. Uh, they have the other, um, the, the Death, uh, Death Squad, Death, Death Squad, uh, uh, Mandalorian helmets and um, uh, the, the, the First Order TK helmet is, is being shipped. I got it. Uh, it's being shipped to me apparently. Um, and uh, yeah, they, it's just they got the uh, the Captain Cardinal back there and then Wedge Antilles. So it, it is a golden age if you're into collecting these helmets at a very, very reasonable price too, might I add. I mean, this retail for about $150 Canadian, $99 US. Um, geez, it's worth every penny. Let's look at the interior of this. Like, look at the detail on the inside. And this is, these pads are spongy. They're not, they're not hard form plastic. Um... And this is stuff no one's gonna really see, except for the person who's wearing it, right? But that's, look at that. That's just done, oh, there goes the light. There goes the light. I really gotta invest in an AC adapter. I have batteries. It's running off a of battery, but it has such uh, a short lifespan. Batteries! Yeah, and I'm not gonna drop it. I'm gonna try not to drop it. Tommy's asking me, how many scratches can you put on it? <laughs> Shut up, Tommy! Um, no, I think I'm going to keep this nice and nice and pristine. Although, you know, if you wanted to, and you wanted to weather it, and you wanted to do cosplay with this, I think absolutely. This is, this is really, I think I keep getting wowed by, by, by Black Series. Like, there, this is, like, this is the real deal here. Look at that. And it's, and it's not, it's narrower than the, uh, the Empire Strikes Back, the Boba Fett 40th anniversary one. It's much... It looks smaller. The, the Boba Fett one is wider. I can see from here. Uh, we could do a side-by-side -side, uh, comparison in a second. Um. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, KW Matterhorn's asking, how about Vic uh, Mag Magnonia's Star Trek continues? I haven't seen that. I have not seen that. I So I've got to look into that. I will look into that and... Uh, uh, my wife is answering, yes, Battlestar Galactica. Yes, of course, Battlestar Galactica, the original 70s version and the, the 2004 reboot. Um, oh, yes, I have seen those. Yes, Star Trek Continues. Those are brilliant. That's Those are the fan-made ones, right? Um, and it, I love I love watching them. Yeah, uh, absolutely, KW Matterhorn. Um, do yourselves a favor, everybody. Go find, uh, just Google Star Trek Continues. Uh, it's a fan film, much like Bucketheads, but it is the set. They're, they're spot on because they're recreating the original sets from Star Trek, the original from the '60s, the late '60s um, television series, and and we're at the point right now where we can recreate it. But he's been doing this well before, and he's the costumes are perfect, and he plays himself, uh, Kirk, and he's he's got it down. Like the characterization, he's got it down. Um, the stories are great. They're actually getting old cast members uh who played other characters um they did an episode of like it was a it was a sequel to whom gods destroy i think it was and that was with um the, the actor who played apollo in that came uh sort of he he uh um reprised his role in that and i was really exciting and um the tone of the show is right and uh yeah no it's a lot of fun yes thank you so much it took me a second to sort of click on it because i don't i have it actually bookmarked um on my computer, in, in my bra in my my bookmark section, the hist browser thing, whatever, you know, I'm so excited. Uh, it's there, and I haven't I haven't been watching as many of the episodes, but it's it's great. It really is great. I love them. Um, Melissa, you're asking original Battlestar Galactica or the reboot or both? I love them both. They both have their 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 great 
Uh, I mean, the original one I saw when I was a kid, and again, much like Star Trek, uh, it really sort of filled that, that Star Wars void, right? Because I, I think they actually came out with Glennie Larson released Battlestar Galactica to try to copy the success of Star Wars. Um, and it came out as a as like a, a, a two-hour movie that they then converted into a TV pilot and changed a little bit to extend it into a series. So for those of you who don't know, in the, in the original uh, Battlestar Galactica television show, got Baltar... Um, he betrayed the 12 colonies, and in the movie, they cut his head off. The Cylons kill him. But when they made it into a pilot, they ended up sparing him, and he became the main bad guy that was chasing uh, the ragtag fleet of, of refugees across the galaxy as they were looking for Earth. So, uh, yeah, I love that. But, of course, the reboot was just such a phenomenal um, series as well, just from everything from the production design to the storytelling. The acting was phenomenal in it. Um, yeah, and, and there were a lot of Canadians in that cast, too, which I, I loved. I loved. Um, t Sant, you want to get into cosplay for different superheroes? Yeah, right on. Right on. Uh, you want to do Invincible because you're also a Asian like him, and he's super dope. Just need to get in shape for it, though. Yeah, I hear you, man. I, that's why I can't... Uh, for me, I think... Cosplaying for me is, is difficult when I have armor because I want the armor to fit and I don't want it to look like it's going to pop off of me too. So I know that feeling of wanting to lose a few pounds just so you can fit and, and the armor look proper. Uh, and for comfort too, right? Because it's like it's it's hot and uncomfortable in, in Star Wars armor. Uh, that's why I like the Ghostbusters jumpsuit. It's so great because it's supposed to look baggy and frumpy. Uh, the only thing is though to look super cool... You got to put on a 50 pound proton pack on your back and walk around with that. So it's, it's really not win-win. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, Bad Wolf Media. Hey, how are you? Uh, the original Battlestar has a metric ton of nostalgia value. The Ronald D. Moore series is just an exquisite piece of art. I agree. I agree. Um... Let me see. Okay, well, let's let's get on with this. And sorry, Mark, you're talking about The Expanse. That's another series that I really need to get into. Uh, and it's daunting, but I, I, I want to get into that too. It's just, you know, for all these things, it's a question of time, right? Um, okay, let's, let's... Come on, old man, get to the, get to the helmet. Okay, so let's find out. I've got batteries, and I have a screwdriver. And so now let's find out how do we put this light in. And I have... I have a feeling the answers will be the, in the instructions. Right there. Okay. So, side panel. Okay, right here. This thing. There you go. Don't ruin it, you idiot. There we go. So, this just comes off. And it is really amazing. It's just, it's just spray paint. Right? It's just... But it's it's a nice application uh, of it. But it's... It's plastic, but this, this looks like... Looks like metal. That's the whole point of the plastic, I know. I know. But that's also the lovely thing about cosplaying and prop building is you take these very ordinary uh, materials and you make them look extraordinary. Uh, and it is, it is that that, illu that illusion I love. I love, love, love that. Um, when you can make a piece of wood look like a sheet of armor. When you can make Sintra or ABS plastic look like uh, Beskar. It's, that's magic. That's the magical part of it, you know? Or Durasteel. Like, it, it's stuff like that that makes it so much fun. Book of Boba Fett hype. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the Book of Boba Fett. I'm looking forward to Boba Fett finally being the badass he should have been right from the get-go. Back in there. Okay. Ooh, look. It lit up. Can you see it? Can you see it? There's... So there are lights already engaged in there. There's a, there's a switch here. So I'm not quite sure what that's for. Check the instructions. Uh, hold for display mode. And that's why. There you go. So that's how you turn them off. And that's, see? Living proof instructions work. There you go. 
If you have that, you can do that. Turn it on. Let's see if we can attach this light to it. Now, this is the uh, the search light, the, uh, the additional search light that you can have, uh, the optional attachment onto here. And you can see here, there are, there are prongs. Uh, so you don't have to put a separate battery in this light case. It'll probably just feed off the battery I just installed here. Um, and yeah, shell pose, the, the, the paint on this helmet is epic. Like I, I'm blown away by the quality of, of that. So yeah, so that just, oops, this just popped right off. Right. And this, I assume would just pop right in. There you go. It's in. And now, if I wanted to turn it on, there's a little I, there's a little button. Is it, how do you? It's so funny. There's a button that's molded or cast onto here. I guess you have to. I'm trying to turn it on and nothing's happening. Defect! Defect. Uh, yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, is the connection, is it connected properly? Yeah, that's connected. I press the button. It says here, cycle through light pattern. I got to, if I want to turn it on. There's the, was it on the other side? No. What the hell? Uh, yeah, this, this is humbling. This is humbling. Or maybe mine's just not working. So the lights on the interior are flashing. This is a, in the instruction, it says, depress it, right? Cycle through. Boop. I just, just need to click it a bunch of times. Is there a safety thing? Sometimes they have a display only mode. You just have to, you click it. <laughs> Why did I get the light to work? I would like to get it to work, please. I'm not impressed. No, it's not working. Oh, there we go. I got it. I don't know how. There you go. It's working. And it just switched off. Son of a There you go. Okay. I don't know what I did. I don't know what happened, but it's working now. <laughs> it's fixed. It's not broken. It's not broken. <laughs> it's fine. It's good. No, it's not a floor model. It was, it was, it was, stop it. KW Matterhorn. Shut up. Uh... <laughs> Here we go. Let's. I missed a bunch of. I know I missed a bunch of comments. People like ragging on me because I, I couldn't get this to work. Um, let's say so yes, 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 yes. Book of Boba Fett. Yes. Looking at. Looks like the battery setup is for the Fett helmet without the rangefinder. That's right. It's very, very similar uh, to that. Um, Rocket Robin Hood. Yes. Thomas D. I lo I still. I love that. That opening song was was amazing. Um, and what is this made of? The, the helmet is, it's, it's, it's a hard, it's a hard plastic. The paint is phenomenal. Look at the inside there, the visor. It's much more narrow. Uh, there is no sound. It's just, just lights. And you know what? The light just, I think it just, it deactivates to save power because it is just a single AA battery uh, that's powering that and uh, the interior of the helmet right there. And so... I think it actually just sort of, it'll switch off on its own. Um, and that helmet is shiny, as in shiny from Firefly. Yeah, that's the first thing that came to mind too. It's like, ooh, shiny. And you hit two genres at the same time. Um, 
Regan Demosconi. Hey, Paul, do you like Huey Lewis and the News? I do. I do like them. Uh, I like them a lot, especially, you know, back when I was in, uh, I guess, great in, in junior high. Uh, and they did, you know, the music for Back to the Future, which is another franchise I absolutely adore. Um, yeah, Joe, Italy wins in soccer. The Blue Jays win in baseball up a live feed. What a great Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, Joe. I'm glad you're enjoying this. I'm glad I could I could finish off this hat trick for you. So that's nice. Um, yes, the battery was put in the right way. Thank you, Thomas D. Uh, yeah, okay. I did. I did. Yeah, see, here's the, all the, the armchair quarterback saying... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it was a a it was Agatha all along, gal. Thank you. That's a great that's a great joke. Uh, for those of you who don't know, go check it out. The um, the oh god, I can't even remember. Wandavision. There you go. It's it's been a day, and I've had a little bit of alcohol. Uh, yeah, Tommy K. Band of brothers marching together, heads held high in all kinds of weather. Shut up, Tommy. Um. The connector pins Hasbro uses are finicky. That's what Bad Wolf Media is saying. You have similar issues from time to time with a FET helmet. Haven't figured out how it gets knocked loose. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? It's It seems to be... Oh, man. Yeah. As he says it, it clicks off. Yeah, I think... it. That's that's to be expected, I think, if you have something that's interchangeable. Look at this. I'm already... I don't know if you can see it, but my fingerprints... My grubby fingerprints are already uh, showing up on the paint, which is kind of cool. Try it on! Try it on. Should I? All right. I should try it on. Everybody wants. Everyone wants me to try it on. Should I try it on? Okay. See, I've got a big head. I don't know. The the other buckets uh, are a bit tight sometimes. Like the wedge one. If I take the padding out, it's nice, but it's tight. The Boba Fett one was good. Um, I, this one looks kind of small, but let's see. Oh. It's not bad. I got a little bit of the beard hanging out, but it's, I think I need to adjust it. I just need to open it up more because of my gigantic, my giant, my gigantic head. Um, the material that they use for the, for the helmet uh, is actually, uh, the helmet liner is actually way more comfortable. They've softened it. Um, they used to have the really hard sort of uh, hard hat helmet, uh, hard plastic. And this is much, it's much more malleable, it bendable. Uh, it's, it's a softer plastic. Um, yeah, maybe it is a ghost turning off, turning the, uh, turning the light off. <laughs> Have I tried turning it off and turning it back on? Yeah, I know. Thank, thank you, Ashley. I'm trying the beard I know. Hello, Princess Princess Lee from California. Hi, how are you? Here we go. Take two. I heard something pop. I think it was my it was my head. Here we go. So yeah, it fits. I mean this isn't this is nice. There we go. There's a lot of there's there's enough room in it. I, I need to, it's tight around my temples. And I'm gonna need to to adjust it better, but it's not too bad. Um, yeah, I mean, you can see out of it, which is great. Uh, it's very open under here, as you can tell from my beard sticking out. Uh, it's not as claustrophobic as some of the other helmets that I do have, just because the bottom is it's it's very like there's a lot of room under the chin, so you get a lot of air coming in. Um, it's tight for me though. It's tight on my uh, on my temples, and uh, that's if you if you can see here. This is I mean it's it's narrow. So there's and they're maxed out. So there's there's not much more I can do. I can give myself maybe a little bit more room in the front, uh, but that's about it. And it does it does shift back and forth. There's a little bit of wiggle room here on it. So that hopefully would be uh, a bit more adjustable, but. Uh, no, this is, it's pretty smegging fantastic right there. Uh, KW at Matterhorn's asking, he's saying I should get, hold on a second. Get Baby Yoda. Get Baby Yoda. You mean, 
Grogu, back here. I think we have like that's that's a sideshow collectible one. If you watch my uh, my previous unboxing from last week, fun boxing, uh, I opened him up last week. So yeah, he's great. I actually do have a, another. Uh, I was able to to procure uh, a Hot Toys version of the one to one scale uh, size Grogu. So I'm looking forward to unboxing that and doing a comparison because um, I hear as I love the sideshow collectible version of Grogu. It's spectacular. The detail's great. I hear the Hot Toys one is even better. So I'm looking forward to, to comparing those things. Um, yeah, <laughs> the beard. Uh, it's it's getting. See now you can see already. It's it's got a life of its own. I gotta get my man Addy. I gotta get him to, to trim it up and clean it up because I'm I'm feeling rather blah about it. Uh, Nathan was asking, can I see it all? Like with the helmet on? Yes, uh, it's got great sight lines. Actually, with the helmet, it's it's actually quite good. Uh, wide field of vision, uh, not as restrictive as say like if you've got a TK bucket on, you've got the the two eye holes. Um, this would be a helmet if you wanted to cosplay in it. Uh, to you would have you would want. I mean, if you wanted fans in it, you could do it. Um, you'd have to wear. A, uh, uh, a balaclava to hide your like if you had a beard for example because one of the things is you don't want people to see the skin underneath it um, but uh, yeah no it's 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 great you can the the sight lines are great in it uh, visibility is very very good uh, in this let me see let's put this here um, oh Princess Leia saying yay and it's Princess Leia from Star Wars Leia Oh, thanks. I love you too. <laughs> I love the name. I think it's so clever. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. My heart's still broken about Carrie Fisher too. Uh, oh, Kim's Convenience, Casey. Yeah. That too. That too. Uh, Corey D saying, after seeing your Ghostbusters vid a few weeks ago, I pulled the trigger and bought a Spangler Neutrona wand and now my wife is cursing because it's too loud. LOL. Thanks for the recommend. As long as it brings you joy... I'm happy because as Andrew Fung and I say to each other, treat yourself, right? You've earned it. You should enjoy it. And uh, I, it's spectacular. It's on display over there. I love it. I love it. I think it's great. And I can't wait for the next movie to come out. And it's coming out soon. I think they're finally going to get around to releasing Ghostbusters Afterlife, I think, this summer. And, you know, if, if we're fully vaxxed, that might be the first movie I want to see in the theaters again in over a year. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Um, Epic Gamer, you do have a big head. Thank you. Uh, KW Matterhorn, hey, thoughts on Boba Fett's original debut performance on CBS's 1978 Star Wars Holiday Special? Well, it was animated, and they did modify him. Uh, I think it's it's cool because they use elements, obviously, from that uh, that appearance uh, with the, the Ambin rifle, for example. Um, and, and use it for later on uh, in The Mandalorian itself. Uh, you know, Kevin, who's out there toying around, he and I, we have this thing, and it's absolutely true, and Yoko McCann as well, who joins us uh, on Kevin's channel, toying around on Mondays at 10 o'clock this week, because we have baseball practice. Um, not us, but I, I'm a coach for my son's team, and so we have, we've had to push our time. But at 10 o'clock on Monday, we do a Bad Batch recap, and one of the big things that's going on right now is... We love giving fans of Boba Fett a bit of a hard time because in the original trilogy, he wasn't as badass as they were making him out to be. I, I truly believe that. I think he was overhyped. I love him, and I'm not going to yuck anybody's yum. If you love Boba Fett, that's cool. But for me, it was literally, he just had cool armor, but he didn't do that much. And it wasn't until Robert Rodriguez took the helm and you saw him decimate like a platoon an entire squad of stormtroopers that was a boba fett that everybody wanted uh and finally got but in empire and return of jedi not so much anyways we, we love giving some of his friends a hard time about that it's all done with love joe caroni is in the house season three spoiler alert carson teva is the new mandalorian looks great <laughs> my your lips to god's ears right right how are you doing i hope you're doing well uh, Nathan West, a Grogu costume. When? Oh, is that what you're talking about? When am I going to do Grogu costume? Not going to happen. Not going to happen. Um, yeah, the de the headband, Bad Wolf Media brings a good point. The headband should have a dial on the back to open it up a bit wider. It's uh, actually opened up. There is none. 
it's just a strap both sides it's like the the belt loop strap where you have to undo it like the, the back of a snapback hat uh, you have to undo it and click it into place but this is opened up as far as it's going to go in the back the front's got a little bit of play in it but uh yeah this is again black series that's that's the book on them if you've got a big fat head like me it's gonna be tight it's gonna be tight but that's okay because this fits it fits uh and you know when you're cosplaying you kind of have to put up with a bit of discomfort for it to be true cosplaying i think <laughs> uh anton's asking do i have the black series mandalorian dark saber force fx elite lightsaber it's on pre-order it's on pre-order and how's the quality or the kylo ren the kylo ren i actually have funny you should ask i actually have here so this is going to be an unboxing for later on it's the force fx elite there's two different versions of this, as far as I know. This is the one that's kind of the pimped out version of it. So, um, yeah, I do have it. I uh, haven't opened it yet. Saving it for unboxings. Um, yeah, but soon. Soon. I do have it. And uh, with, with, with a few, just a couple other ones. But we'll do all the unboxings eventually. Uh, let me see. Let me see. KW means you put on the helmet. Oh! Put on the helmet and hold Grogu. Sorry. It's, it's been a long day. Mike, of course, showing me the way. Using his brains. Hey, Mike, thanks so much. Uh, Marshall Pyatt's asking, this helmet deserves, saying, this helmet deserves to be shown on your helmet hall of fame behind you. Yeah, I'm running out of room. I'm going to have to start juggling stuff around or extending something out or moving the shelf. Or moving the Battlestar stuff. But it's it's already so Star Wars heavy right now. Um, and I have a feeling there's a little mouse in this house who loves the Mandalorian too. And I have a feeling he's going to want to run around and cosplay with this uh, for a little bit. So I'm going to let him. And that's the other lovely thing about Black Series helmets I find. Um, you can totally wear them. Like kids can wear them to play in. And I'm not I'm not like, oh my god, you're going to ruin it. It's... That's not it at all. Uh, it, like It's not like a $600 Novos where if you drop it and it's fiberglass and it shatters, you're done. Uh, this is something that you kind of go, okay, well, it's it's meant to be kind of played with. Uh, or you could, and it's nice enough to display, but it's meant to play with. So uh, I love that. I think that's great. Win-win um, right there. Um, where did I get all this stuff? I I can't. My wife's watching this live stream, so I can't really say, because then she's going to cut off all my avenues of getting this stuff. So, mostly online. Mostly online. Some stuff I bought at cons, uh, other things through friends and stuff. Uh, but, uh, yeah, there's... I, and then there, there are stores that sell collectibles, too. Comic book stores. I love going to comic book stores to find the collectibles. But, uh, yeah, yeah. The majority of the stuff, uh, and some of the stuff gets sent to me, like the the, the Hot Toys, um, the Deluxe Mandalorian and Child, uh, Luke Skywalker, that got sent to me, and the, the R2-D2 got sent to me by my friends at Sideshow. Uh, so I'm going to be doing those unboxings soon as well. And then the Incinerator Troop, my lovely wife got for me for for uh, for Christmas. I was very happy about that. So, uh, doing that. Uh, Disney needs to bring Andrea Bang into Star Wars or the MCU, Jeps. 1973 absolutely 100% agree andrea needs to be more mainstream in that andy sherbin you're driving home from grafton leanne's driving no sound but i see you i see you too good to see you drive safe and happy father's day uh does the helmet fog up when you wear it jp noble's asking you. yeah it was fogging up a little bit but just near the bottom it wasn't fogging up near the top but it's cool down here in the basement, and I, I'm not walking around in it. But like anything, when she heat up, the, it's it's gonna fog up. I think it's going to, and that's why there is room to, to install some helmet fans if you know how to do that. Uh, I always recommend putting helmet fans in if you can, just for comfort's sake. Um, Rex helmet when? That's a good question, Regan. That's a good question, Hasbro. We're waiting. You've already done the the first sort of like uh, they had a first. A few years ago, like the first edition, first wave of Clone War helmets, but they weren't as accurate. They were really more for for like 
full out. You're gonna play in this. Um, and I would I would love to see Black Series tackle that. Like a phase one, phase two clone helmet, absolutely. Uh, and a and a Captain Rex. Um Spilk, Splick, Splick, Splick. Uh, Father's Day finished one hour and one minute ago in the UK, and I spent my day painting my full-size Proton Pack Bliss. Although, isn't that great? Isn't that awesome? The the weather now is 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 uh, a fabricator's dream because it's nice enough that you can go and paint stuff outside and you can start finishing off your builds. Uh, this is the sweet spot. Like it's not too hot, not too cold. The humidity is at a right point temperature. Uh, right temperature. Humidity is at a right temperature. The humidity is at a perfect level where you can get all this stuff done and not have your paint just get all janky on you. Um, Dan Alexander is saying, I still think real Ghostbusters cartoon is one of the all-time greatest. I agree with you. Uh, Kevin's asking, do my kids call me Appa at home? No. They call me Dad. It's, I think, it's because it would be weird. Because I play Appa on TV. I played Appa on TV and for them to call me Appa. Anyways, just call me Dad beforehand. I still call my Appa Dad. And I call my mom Ma. Like, I don't really say Oma Appa as much uh, as I should. And I think... That's a holdover from when I was growing up, and I didn't want to be Korean. It was just, I just want to fit in. So, mom's mom, mom and dad. So, that's an unfortunate thing, but no, they call me dad, usually. Or, hey! Uh, Michael, Michael saying, I saw you in 2017 at Kim's Convenience in the Distillery District. Still one of my favorite places ever. Thanks. Mine too. Mine too. Uh, gonna skip down. Skip down, skip down. Yeah, Jeps, 1973, Robert Rodriguez playing the guitar for Grogu was lovely. Uh, I mean, and that's, how cool is that? Like, the puppeteers are right there. And it just shows how brilliant the team is on The Mandalorian in terms of, like, having that puppet react to, to Robert Rodriguez as he's playing in real time. You know, there you go. Um, Teva is pronounced Teva, not Teva. That's a really good question. Um, I've done it both ways. I've heard it pronounced both ways. Uh, I'm not sure myself. Although, Favreau, if I recall correctly, said Teva. So, but then when I remember that, I say Teva. But then I'll say Teva. So, it's like Han, Han, Leia, Leah. It depends. I don't know. Um, Epic Gamer is asking if you were to do a cosplay costume at the next convention, what would you choose to would you what would you choose to be and why? Um, I have a number of of builds uh, that I, I've been neglecting. Um, I still need to finish my Mud Trooper. I'd love to doubt, bring that out. Uh, the only problem is it's really hot because it's like. You have like a full tunic and an armor on top of that and then a, like a plash cape. And the helmet's great because it's open face and you can breathe, but you've got so much gear on, it's hot and heavy. Uh, <laughs> um, get out of the gutter. The, the, I do have a Biker Scout uh, costume, uh, Mandalorian remnant version that my wife and I almost killed ourselves trying to build a rush build uh, last Halloween. I'd love to repaint that. I, I wasn't really happy with the weathering. That's a comfy costume uh, as well. But again, after a while, it gets hot in those. Um, I, I What I love about cons is, especially the ones in town, if I go on different days, I can wear different cos cosplays. And so, like, I'll go as Ghost a Ghostbuster one day, somebody from Star Wars another day, and maybe something from Star Trek. Uh, I do have a Star Trek cosplay I have been working on. Um... It's not much, but it's something, and, and I'd like to mix it up a little bit and maybe do a little bit of Star Trek. So, there's that. Um, Mike. Mike's asking, what's more uncomfortable? Uh, an ill-fitting cosplay or explaining to an Asian parent why you didn't get A in math? Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Um... An ill-fitting cosplay is more uncomfortable because you have to wear it the whole day. I think the A, not getting an A in math, there's that storm and then it passes and then you're, you you can skate on by. So for me, 
<laughs> That's what I'm saying. Uh, thanks and goodbye, Panda Magic. I just, I'm sorry, I'm ripping through these. I'm trying, I'm so far behind, and I'm sorry if I'm missing uh, a bunch of, but just for expediency's sake. Um, Brian Humphreys is saying, My wife tells me I have too many Fallout collectibles. I just showed her your collection, and I think it may have gotten a pass. Happy to help. Happy to help. Captain Crispy, hey Chris, how are you? Happy First Father's Day, Mike. That, yes. Ha well, that's of course, Mike. Happy First Father's Day. Because you guys just celebrated your first Mother's Day as well. So that's great. I hope, I hope baby Gwendolyn's doing well. Um, yeah, Sideshow. Ashley, Sideshow is a weakness. That's It's a slippery slope. It's a slippery slope. Um, all right. And we're going to go through here. Do I have... Kevin's asking, do I have Carson Teva's helmet? See, I just said Teva. Uh, do I have Carson Teva's helmet? <laughs> Uh, is there any story behind its design? I don't have the helmet. Uh, they have it still. Lucasfilm has it. But here's a cool story. Uh, Frank Ippolito, who works for <clears throat> a props making company, uh, he reached out to me. He was the one that actually did the the, um, the design. He painted the design on the helmet. And he reached out and said, hey, if you can get a helmet, a blank helmet, I will happily redo it for you and it'll be screen accurate. And I was like, oh my God, that's fantastic. So I was searching around and there was a company I saw on Facebook. Um, I'm actually part of a group. I follow them, they're called Far and Away Creations. And apparently they did, they they uh, uh, put together the helmets for Rogue One. And one of the members there, he had some that were for sale. So I bought one. Uh, now it turns out that Novos was the company that actually, it's their assets. Um, and using those assets, far and away creations, uh, uh, fabricated the helmets, put it all together and then sent them back for further modification and then got sent to Rogue One. And so my helmet is a Rogue One helmet, uh, and I was able to get one and I shipped it over to Frank and he's going to be painting it for me. And so I'll get a chance to have, uh, uh my own version of Carson Teva helmet. I said Teva that time, um, for display, which will be really, really cool or for cosplay because I might cosplay as myself that's odd uh but i mean i could cosplay as appa that'd be fun too right um so yeah there's that story behind that but in terms of the actual helmet design it's got the new republic uh logo on it and he's got the number of kills reflecting his service as a veteran but uh other than that i mean this was this was nobody told me anything so uh it's it's not canon yet, and maybe there'll be a story behind it. Maybe not. So we'll see. Um, I don't have any of the Lego helmets. I do not. I gotta draw the line somewhere. No Lego helmets. Uh, Princess Leia is asking, "Do I speak fluent Korean?" No, I speak enough to get in trouble. And that's 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 about it. But to my to my shame, no, I don't I don't speak. I should, I should, and it's something that. Um, I regret. I regret because growing up, I did. I didn't want to. I wanted to fit in. I didn't want to be Korean. So, there you go. Um, here we go. I'm just looking. I'm sorry. I'm just flipping through anything here. Uh, Ashley's asking if I could cosplay anything in the Star Wars universe. What would I do? You know, I kind of want to do. Uh, I kind of want to do the new Boba Fett, like the the dad bod, Boba Fett. Because that looks like a really badass costume, but like comfortable too, right? Like hot. Like the armor doesn't seem too restrictive and the range of motion and he's badass in that. So yeah, I'd love to do that. Um, Jeps1973 is asking, which Star Trek series is my favorite? I still, you know, honestly, I love the original Trek. Always going to hold my uh, spot in my heart. Then there's Next Generation, the later seasons of that. First season was really kind of like, eh, but they had to establish the first two seasons in my book. But third season onward, once they introduced the Borg, I thought was like, <sighs> that's when it really took off uh, in terms of the storytelling and really sort of claiming their own characters. Um, I was a big fan of Voyager. Really big fan of Voyager. I, I liked it, uh, especially later on. Um, and again, when Seven of Nine, when they introduced Seven of Nine, when Kess left and Seven of Nine joined, I think that, that series really took off. So it would be, yeah. And then DS9 after that. Uh, and uh, yeah, and then I think Discovery and 
uh, and Strange New Worlds, that, that's it's kind of like a separate category. And Enterprise 2, because it is such a different sort of era. Um, yeah. Anyways. Even though Discovery is supposed to predate uh, original Trek, it just, I don't know, it's its kind of like alternate universe feeling, like Kelvin Timeline. So, hope that answers. Um... Sorry, dead air. Oh, oh, keep talking. Keep talking. I'm just going to go through. Princess Leia saying, yeah, you feel you were born in Brazil and you speak Hebrew, but you grew up in California. So now you speak part Hebrew, part Portuguese, part Spanish, mostly. Yeah. Okay. That's, there you go. Um. <laughs> yeah, Carson Teva needs an OKCU droid. They wouldn't let me name my uh, R2 unit. Uh, okay, see you because it's an R2 unit it's supposed to start with an R. So I, I named it in my head. I named the droid that I had in my X Wing uh, R6GO. And R, because it had to start with an R, but 6, as in 6, Toronto, the 6. And the GO after the GO train, because Dave Filoni is a huge GO train fanatic, and my droid was green. So there you go. I'm going to pause and take a bit of a sip because my, my throat's getting a little bit uh, a little parched. It's not alcoholic, unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> that's right. Uh, Gary Lau saying you were born and raised in Toronto, but never, but that never stopped you from fluency in your mother tongue of Cantonese, and you can read Chinese too. Oh, good, that's great. I'm I'm really glad. Um, it, the part of that, like, I'm wondering, did you have like a big community that you could have been that you could be a part of and and use that language and and be proud of because when I was growing up in Calgary uh, there weren't that many Korean families you know and the stuff that I watched on television uh, the Asian representation was, was really poor and when I did see somebody who looked like me they're often made fun of uh, or just like you know like not great characters so didn't want to be Asian growing up uh, Mike saying I like that bitter <laughs> Where can I get that again? Well, it's a good thing you asked, Mike. Um, <laughs> because you can get your official Bitter merch now at bitterasiandude.com backslash merch. Uh, we have hats, beanies, and the new line of represent hats. Oh, I keep forgetting to download a digital... Ah, to show a picture of it. They're up there. Um, they, they are fantastic. I love... Uh, the new represent hats. Uh, I'm getting some shipped to me. I'm going to be wearing them soon. Uh, giving a few of them away soon. Uh, they're spectacular. I love the sentiment behind them. Check out the website. Uh, it's all about representation. And what represent means to everybody. It's it's different for you, for me. Represent can mean where you're from. Who you want to be. Uh, you know, the, the the different things in your life that you know and oh, but always always sort of being the best version of yourself and and that's that's a message that i want to get across and it's not just representation but representing uh so that'd be fantastic um gary saying you went through a phase where you translated for jackie chan well that's cool uh anton saying yeah you want the bitter hat but shipping to the usa costs as much as the hat dude i know i am sorry uh it, it's that's Welcome to my world. When I whenever I try to order something from the U.S. and bring it up here, uh, especially for prop building. I mean, I remember wanting to order. It's with Dale resistors, twenty-five cents to buy, and I had to buy like ten of them. So it's like okay, two dollars and fifty cents. Shipping was twenty-five dollars American. I hear you. I I don't know, man. Free trade. I thought that was supposed to ease that, but until they do. Yeah, it's kind of stuck, and I'm, I'm sorry. I wish there was a way uh, to, to just try to make it cheaper, but it, they got you by the short and curlies when, when they, for the shipping companies, uh, especially during the pandemic, right? Um, Jeps, 1973, saying, I love meeting a Korean family in New York. I got to try some of their food and learn a few words. Didn't meet many Koreans in New York in the 80s. Sadly, it took until the 90s for me to meet others and learn more. Yeah, it's... It's it's kind of hard. It's it was I mean, and for me growing up too, there weren't very many Korean families, and the ones that we did know and, and their kids, we didn't get along. It was just like this weird sort of like 
animosity instead of like, oh, we're the same. It was just like, if we weren't family, we were kind of like, you, who are you? I don't, I can't explain it. I don't know why. But it's much better now that we're adults is what I'm saying. So, uh, there you go. Um, KW at Matterhorns, you're asking my thoughts on the J.J. Abrams uh, Star Wars trilogy possibly being retconned through Star Wars Elseworlds. You know, just, I think we're beating a dead horse at this point. Uh, and I think trying to retcon everything to appease everyone is a bad move. The movies are the movies. Just let them die. Let them be like that. Not to die, but just leave them alone. It's kind of like um, in The Simpsons when the Hamburglar is trying to steal a hamburger and like Homer's just like, and just beating the crap out of him. It's just like, it's dead already. Just, just let him go. Enough. Stop. Um, and I think, yeah. Uh, I, I would like to see them do something different. Let's, let's, let's move on. Let's draw a curtain over uh, that chapter and and it is what it is and people enjoy it and the, it'll There are moments that are enjoyable for I think everybody because it's Star Wars, but uh, I think endlessly just trying to repair something Let's move on. Let's move on uh, Pete has accent. Yeah, I tried shipping to Germany. I hear you uh, I'll order 4k movies German special editions uh, of great movies Germany does it right. When they're doing a premium sort of release of a, a 4K movie, like American Werewolf in London, that's coming. Uh, it's a German version. Of, it's beautiful, but sh the shipping, it'll kill you. The shipping will kill you. Um, my wife just told me to purchase merch, but as a middle-aged white guy, I'm not sure if I can rock bitter Asian gear. That's why it just says bitter. Uh, no, you know what? Um, the represent hats will be right down your alley. And the bitter hats are, you know could be anything doesn't really have to be bitter asian dude it is part of the brand but bitter i think is a state of mind as well state of being so uh they are thank you mike bitter and represent are indeed universal and i'm gonna oops <laughs> hit the wrong button yeah that, that's me learning ecam right there bye bye okay uh Regan's asking, should they make the Knights of the Old Republic films? Yeah, I think they're doing a version of that. And it would be cool. I think it would be really cool. Um, I, I would really love to see something fresh, though. Uh, something that isn't in the expanded universe that everybody sort of pre-knows the story and wants to prejudge and, and make comparisons to. Let's do something fresh. Let's, like, let's, let's move off that beaten path and do something with new characters um, that is in-universe. Uh, I, I think the universe is big enough for that. And I think really good storytelling can carry the day. Can carry the day if it's Star Wars. Uh, okay, Melissa K. I do love the idea of the represent hats, but I think the shipping would kill you. Yeah, I know. Um, I gotta look into that. I'm gonna look into that because it, there's gotta be better options. There's gotta be better options. Uh, they might take a lot longer. Uh, but again, it's it's one of those things where I want to be able to, sh to make sure the hats are shipped and they're not like crushed and sort of like mangled. Um, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna look into that. We'll look into that uh, because it would be it would be a shame if a lot of people just didn't order because the shipping was stupidly expensive. I agree. Um, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's let, let's go into the second part of this live stream here this is fantastic $150 Canadian $99 US if you can get them highly recommend it uh, the paint job is spectacular it's a little janky in terms of the connector here for the light but uh, it, it you know that aside um, you know I don't think I would have this light on anyways uh, I kind of like just the clean look of get off I kind of like the clean look of his helmet there. Just smooth lines. Just like, as he wrecks it, just like that. Uh, looks like Beskar. Looks like Beskar. Uh, really easy to weather. Um, doesn't look like you need a ton of modifications, although you probably would need some modification if you're uh, wanting to join the Mandalorian Mercs. Um, but again, if for just fun cosplay, this is, this is like so worth it. Podrick, how do you know every time I'm about, every time you got to come up here. Okay. You want up? Okay. 
Come on up, jerk. Come on. Okay, get up. Get up. Uh, this is Podrick. He's my doge. Hmm? He likes to... He likes to take a broom. <laughs> he likes to take a broom. Behind the... He's, he's right behind me. So my dog's behind me. Here, I'm gonna... <clears throat> you don't get a free ride. Hey. He's... Oh. What? Chair. That. Mm, 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 mm. My dog. My dog. My dog. Oh. 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 Are you full? Are you full? Hey? Okay. He's... He likes to curl up behind me when I'm live streaming. I don't know why. Uh, okay. Who's saying what? Uh, the chat. Yes. Uh, Peanuts accent. You still want Rian Johnson's Star Wars? Yeah. I like The Last Jedi too. I did. And I was really excited to see where they were going to go with that. But uh, mm. toxicity, fear. Those are, the, those are the ways of the dark side. Okay. So. I have something else here that I was really excited to open up. Now these I've been sitting on for over a year. My dear friend Andrew Fung uh, got these for me. Uh, and uh, here we go. These are, you know, let's get rid of, let's get rid of this ugly chump right there. These are the Reebok limited edition Ghostbuster uh, shoes that were released uh, earlier on in uh, 2020. Uh, these were, of course, because they're limited edition, they sold out like crazy. Now, luckily, I have a friend who's very good at procuring sneakers. <laughs> uh, here's the box right here. It says, disclaimer, Ghost Smashers do not pump, they smash. So this is the Ghost Smasher version. You can see it is, let's bring this here. There you go. You got the branding Reebok, right? The no go symbol, Columbia Pictures, right? It's uh, modeled to be like uh, a ghost trap. Let's open it up a little bit more. This is how it ends. Hmm. Hmm. So here we go. Yeah. Let's open this up here. And oh, wow. Wow. So that's nice. That's so nice. It's got some sort of script in it, which I'm sure is very, very relevant in the movie, right? Mesopotamian, maybe. Look at that. And then we have... Ooh. That's pretty, right? Uh, no, that, that writing is part of the design. Fung did not write on it. Fung's handwriting is actually a lot neater than the writing that's on here. You, he's got very, very neat, bubbly sort of uh, handwriting. And yeah, don't tear the, this. This tissue paper, I think I won't tear. I think I'll keep. Let's remove it. Now, Andrew said, I had to wear these. I can't resell them. I have to wear them. And I have to say, holy crap, these are beautiful. Like, this is, <laughs> it's got these these soles here. They're kind of pre-weathered, right, to make it look like they're pre-worn a little bit. They got the Reebok symbol with the, uh, the yellow and black stripes from the Proton, uh, from the Ghost Trap. Right there. It's a Velcro enclosure. Whoa, look at that. And uh, it's got the ankle. Anchor here. So these, you know what these remind me of? The bug, Ripley's Bug Stomper uh, shoes from Aliens. Uh, you look on the inside, you have, you can't see it because the light crapped out, but there's a ghost. The ghost symbol in there. There's a no ghost in there. It's it's interesting. It's the exposed. This it's the foam is exposed. It's like part of the design where it's it's stitched, but it's open there. And of course, you have the Reebok pump. 
Uh, I guess this is supposed to be kind of like a, a proton pack, although this is more of like the slime blower. This is this reminds me much more of the science slime blower from Ghostbusters 2. Um, and then you have <laughs> the connecting cables to the, the actual shoe itself. But nice, simple lines. It's the Ghostbusters, like the Ecto-1 colors, right? Red and white. And let's look at the let's look at the sole. Ooh, look at that. That's really cool. Right? Yeah, <laughs> Andrew's got his own pair. Oh, he he secured his own pair for sure. Um, and uh, Brett Brett Whitsett says you have the Reeboks Alien Stomper. It's amazing, an amazing shoe. Good for you. I'd, the the Bug Stomper shoe, like. That's the thing. If you're in the know, you know, and you can get your hands on them, it's gold. Uh, if you don't, yeah, you're in a world of hurt. Because if you're just planning on, like, strolling into your, your Foot Locker or, or any kind of sh a Reebok store and just picking them off the shelves, you're going to be heavily disappointed. Now, I want to point out here, this is great because these are, like, the dry deco rubs that are on the, the uh, proton, the, the thrower, the neutrono wand. And this is very reminiscent of the LED... Uh, the bar that like the indicator bar that lights up and down, but these are for sure from the Neutrona wand. Um, so they've got elements everywhere from on this shoe, uh, from the proton trap here, uh, and it's got the the it's it's got the Union Jack that's under there uh, as well, and it's got you know again these symbols that are there they're on the wand, and that looks that reminds me so much of, of the LED, uh, the chase display there. Uh, and these little touches here on the wand as well, there's a little triangle on the top of the, with the control knob and it's got one, two, three, the settings on there. Um, yeah, nice little, little details, little flourishes that are great. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the, uh, the ghost stomper, uh, the ghost stomper version right there then not only this pair but Fung how super cool is he he was able to secure this other pair right there were two right again very similar boxes there's writing over it right let's talk more bust less talk more busting Reebok. That's really cool. This is how it ends. I think this message is for sure. Um, it's it's got to be tied into Ghostbusters Afterlife. Um, you know, pump it up. It says bust it up, which is great. Again, disclaimer: Ghost Smashers do not pump; they smash. Uh, the box is very very similar to the other one. It's much smaller though. It's smaller than the the other ones with the pump. Let's open them up again. open this one up it's got the same type of tissue same ancient writing scrawls on there it looks like it's a map there's a map you know what there's a there's a point in the movie where uh, I guess it's one of Ejon, Ejon, Egon's descendants and they've got a map and they go to a mine Shandor mines and I have a feeling that this tissue paper is kind of like a recreation of that I'm gonna find out because I'm gonna pull it all out I'm gonna take a look at it. But let's take a look at these shoes first. Yo! Look at that! That is stunning. That is, look at that. It's got the original tags on them. Um, wow. It's got the No Ghost logo and it's, it's a vinyl rubberized version of it. It's got a yellow, uh, the lace holder there is yellow. This material here. Uh, let's switch this over. Okay. This, I, you can see the ribbing. Come on. Focus. Focus. Stupid camera. Focus. There. You can see this, the, the stitching in it is exquisite. Uh, yeah, the detail is fantastic on that. And it's, uh, of course the material is very reminiscent of the, uh, the jumpsuits that the Ghostbusters all wear. And I'm gonna put this down here for now. 
Wow. And on the inside, uh, can you see that? Look at that. It's, it is uh, a no ghost with a Reebok. I, I don't know if they glow in the dark. And it's a couple of proton streams from a couple of Neutrona wands. And the, the beams extend right down into the toe of the shoe. Um, of course, it's got the Reebok name tag right there. So this is obviously supposed to be like the unit. And it says ready to, why about the other shoes? It says, ready to believe you. That's great. And the detailing here, of course, the bl black and yellow striping. Woo! And look at this shoe here has little green bits there. Like the slime. That's really cool. That is so cool. These are these wonderful. Here's the front profile. There you go. Front profiles. And then the, uh, look at that, the soles. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, it's interesting because these ones are much cleaner version like this is this is sort of like the uniform freshly pressed and the other bug stomper the, the other one the ghost smasher one is more of a it's it's purposefully sort of weathered so this is like the equipment where it's it's kind of it's been used it's it's kind of grubby in that sense uh and it, it's for business whereas this is much more and it, it's even reflected too like if you look at the the soles right one's for work and the other one's for for other things <laughs> that's cool that is very cool here i'm gonna i'm gonna take out this, this tissue paper and take out this tissue paper and i'm gonna see oh yep it is oh i dropped something i don't know what the hell from. No, it wasn't too expensive whatever it was Ooh, I feel like Mikey in the Goonies. I feel like Mikey in the Goonies. Here. Look at that. So, yeah, there's some sort of a... Looks like I'm... It's upside down. How do I know they're upside down? Because of the mountain. And it looks like, yeah. They have... This is this is very reminiscent of uh, sorry, very reminiscent of what I, I think we see in, in the in one of the clips for Afterlife where the the the, the actors they they got this map and they find they go to the this this mine shaft uh, that's what it seems like and there's some sort of cross sectional rift happening here, which is really really cool. Uh, this is a keeper then. This tissue paper is a keeper. Gonna keep it nice and safe and uh, make sure I have it to hold on to for when the movie finally drops. But look at that. How cool is that? It's a map to One-Eyed Willie's treasure, that's right. It belongs in a museum. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, I, Gary, I hope the, the, I really, really hope the theaters are open for, for, for the movies to be open. I mean, I, just certain movies you need to see in the movie theater as much as i hate being in crowds i hate being in crowded theaters to begin with like to be honest um just because i, I find people's manners while watching movies have become atrocious um and it's the the talking just the talking during during the movies drives me crazy it's like you're not in your living room shh quiet if you want to talk go to the cafe but don't sit behind me and Put your big stinky feet up on my chair. That's why I always sit at the back, the movie theaters now. I don't want anybody behind me. Um, and But the, the talking drives me insane. Just watch the movie. You can react to the movie. You can laugh. You can go, oh, that's fine. But I've been to too many movies now where people just ruin it by talking all the way through. So I think that's, that's a lost art. I would like to see some civility return to the movie theater. Uh, and there's this great story going out about how 
like these two women doing one movie uh got into a shouting match because the one woman's kid kept talking all the way through the other woman went up and admittedly told the kid to shut the f up and that started a huge brawl and one of the women tased the other woman and it was just like okay um that's what it's come down to it's just barbaric so uh there you go um yes melissa k is saying my guess is there's supposed to be ley lines converging on some ultimate spirit source i think you're right i think you're right now i saw somewhere earlier on that um someone asked if i if i was gonna ever wear these out or keep them like this um they're so cool they are so pretty but i made a promise fung said i'm gonna give these to you but you have to wear them you can't resell them and so yeah i'm gonna wear them now it's about finding the perfect time to wear them and i think these i'll bust out the first con i go to there you go the first live con that i go back to uh i just realized you're staring at a big empty mat right now so i'm gonna go switch back over here <laughs> oh man um yeah tommy you say just tell them to shut up at the movies i'm good at it you know there's so many ways because I don't like just saying shut up, even though they deserve it. Uh, it really is about, I mean, I try, I give them, like, you know, give them the shush and then you, you ask politely, Hey, look, can you do mine? I can't hear the movie. And a lot of times, sometimes they, I, what kills me is when they get all huffy, like, Oh, who the hell do you think you are? Uh, which just slays me because it's like, well, I'm somebody who paid money for a ticket and wants to hear the movie and not you jammer on like a couple of idiots. That's just me. And I don't want to get in a fight. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, I, I find that's this is why I invest heavily as well in physical media. 4K stuff. Uh, Blu-ray, high def. Got a nice TV. Uh, nice sound system. Because it drives me nuts. And I'd rather watch... Uh, and that's how sad it is. I'd rather watch a big ticket movie at home where I can pause it. And the only people talking are my family. And I can rewind it if I need to, if I miss something. Instead of being in a theater on edge because I'm worried about somebody ruining the experience. That's how bad it's gotten. Maybe after the pandemic, it'll be better. What do you guys think? Do you think it'll be better? Like, do you... Are you one of those ones who likes to talk all the way through a movie? Does that drive you nuts? What are your strategies around dealing with people who are like that? Uh, or does it bother you at all? Do you just sort of go, meh, it is what it is, and just sort of delve into the movie? I know I've had more than one movie ruined, though, because somebody's just brought me right out of the moment with... Their inane chatter or braying at something really, really obvious. Um, yeah. I remember watching The Sixth Sense. And there was, like, that the person who has to comment on everything. Like, when, when the mom went into the, you know, walks out of the kitchen and all the, the, door, the, the drawers are closed. And she comes back in, they're all open. And they said, oh, all the drawers are open! And it was just like that through the entire movie. Uh, yeah. There was going to be a homicide. I, I don't want to go to jail. So... It's, it's stuff like that. It's stuff like that. Cell phones. Yes, Gary. Cell phone ringing. That's... Oh, during a screening of the ring. Okay. I mean, it's cool if the audience gets into it. Like, I remember watching Misery at in the cheap theaters in Dundas Square, uh, in the old Eaton Center, when it was like the, the smallest screen was like the size of a big TV screen, basically. And we lost... Like, it was a cheap Tuesday. The place was packed. And by the end of the movie, everybody was on their feet, screaming at the screen. But it was like a shared group experience. It wasn't just one or two people just sort of ruining it for everybody. It was like, that's the best. When, you, when you're in it for that, and the entire audience knows how to behave, and you are all get caught up in it, I think that's amazing. Uh, but sadly, those are, those are the exceptions to the rules uh, lately. So, um, Albert Fung. I say watch it privately first. You know, that's interesting. I actually, um, I, w I prefer going to matinees when there are less people there. Like, I'd rather go watch it just so that I can just enjoy the film. Um, and uh, that's that's kind of like it being private. That's why I always try to hit the first matinee of something or, you know, uh, try to find another time after a movie's been in the theaters for a while and go see it then. So, it's less people. Um, what's Kevin, what, what's, what's my wife saying? Kevin Lee. Nope, it's all Paul's. What, what are you asking? What did Kevin ask? Do you have any of your own stuff in that geeky basement? Yeah, you've got your, you've got all this fabric 
Don't leave. No, she's got her fabric. She sews. She's got a lovely serger that somebody who loves her very much got for her. Um, she's got all these wonderful little things that are done. There's a washing machine and dryer. Um, she's coming to kill me. She's coming to get me. <laughs> Caleb Diaz, you're saying you when you went to see Last Jedi in the theaters, one guy was describing everything that was happening in the film to his friend. And I turned my head and asked kindly, you are ruining this film. And he stopped. Good for you. Good for you. Good for you. I think it's how you ask them. I think it's just like, or how you approach them. If you're like, fuck off, shut up, you're going to get into a fight. But if you, if you say like, hey, you know, honestly, I, I think civility, that's the key. And then if it doesn't work, well, you can always go to the manager. Um, yeah, and then Albert, you're saying then you head to the theater if you want to see, experience it with everybody. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Pete has accent, loud eaters at the movies. Yep, yep. Loud eaters anywhere, really. Uh, yeah, we've done a couple of table reads where there were a couple of loud readers. Like, I'm not going to say who in the cast. But people, it's like, you know when your lines are coming up, swallow your food before you say your... I know it's lunch. I know it's lunch, but we all have to eat and read the script for, for the next block. Chew your food. Find where you're going to read and swallow before you say your lines. That's all I'm going to say. Um, like people... Tommy K, like people heckling at the movie Cats. Did that ruin the movie Cats for you, Tommy? Is that that's what it was? You really want to sit and enjoy Cats, and people heckling it ruined it for you? I'm not even gonna give you a shut up for that. Not even. I saw a bit. We saw a bit of Cats uh, on television, and man, that's a movie you have to watch under the influence of something, like <laughs> just to get through. What the hell was that? I'm sorry. I, it was just so weird. Like, why did some of them have, like, shoes and pants and others were wearing fur when they have fur? I don't know. And the human... It was just... Anyways. An interesting experiment. An interesting experiment. Um, yeah, and when an audience claps at the same time for something amazing in the film, yeah, that's absolute, That's the shared experience. That's what I love. I love that, uh, too. Um... Sorry, I'm just flying through these comments right now. So if I miss something that one of you have written, uh, I apologize for that. Uh, I'm just trying to interact with as many people as I can. Uh, Princess Leia is asking, will I ever direct a movie? Yeah. One day. One day. Oh, my wife is saying the wash and dryer are ours. Yeah, they are. They're ours. We got them together. It's just, you use them more than me. So, I want to. But I always get this feeling that you don't like me using them. So that's it. Wade Wade from Edmonton saying, Hello, do you have any outstanding orders for Monovos? <laughs> I do, my friend. Uh, I have thousands of dollars in their bank account and nothing to show for it. Did you do anything about it? Yeah, I complained and I messaged them and then they cut all that off. You cannot. You cannot even email them directly anymore. Uh... I have outstanding Mandalorian helmet and uh, from three years ago, going on four years ago, Red 5 helmet. Uh, and uh, those are the two outstanding orders. And I was dumb because I shouldn't have gone with the Mandalorian helmet, but it was in stock. And I actually had had some good experiences with the Novos when this stuff was in stock. So I bought it and still waiting, still waiting. Now this is an interest list. Uh, the only thing I can say to you is your stuff is coming. It's gonna take forever and a day, but it's coming. I had a Darth Vader helmet, finally. I thought, that's it, I've lost my money. I, I assume all my money's gone. It's all gone. Um, and I was, I'm very fortunate to be in a position where it's like, okay, I can absorb that loss. It sucks, but it's not like, it's at the expense of, of, of like, that was my dog. <laughs> it's not at the expense of like, you know, bill payments or, or stuff like that. So I, I'm very fortunate in that way. And it showed up. Um, stuff is coming out. I, I know just recently they had a run of Battlestar Galactica, the original series, uh, jackets. They all went out. 
and that was like for people four years into winning. So they're getting through. It, it's going to be slow. And I think with the opening of, of uh, Galaxy's Edge, slowed stuff down even more because the Novos, when they got that contract, I think they took all the pre-orders, all the stuff they had in stock, and they shipped it all over there. Uh, for the work they did with the movies, I think that's what they did. They took everybody's pre-orders and they shipped it over there. Uh, and they're gonna ref they're gonna fulfill our orders eventually, but I think they sacrificed their paying customers to uh, to sort of accommodate their needs in terms of working with with the big with Lucasfilm. Uh, and uh, yeah, sadly, uh, I think that's why I'll never order from Anovas again uh, until they clean up their business practices because it's really not fair that they were using people's pre orders to pay for stuff that they hadn't you know. Uh, that they hadn't even manufactured yet. It was kind of like a Ponzi scheme. Anyways, they fixed that. They're, they're slowly getting around to it, but until they come up with a better model to uh, satisfy the customers, because their product is, it's amazing. Um, I have to say, the Unovos helmets I have, I love them. All the stuff, I've got the Han Solo DL44 blaster, like the rig with the, the holster. It's great, great quality. The uniforms that I've gotten from them, the Imperial officer stuff, it's great quality. It just shouldn't take years to get to you, uh, and I, that's that's where they've. I think they've lost the confidence from a lot of people, and and right rightly earned a lot of people's wrath. So yeah, my advice: you gotta wait. You gotta wait. Are you okay? He's snoring. He's snoring. You okay, buddy? Too much steak, fatty. That's his problem. Um, what's Brent saying? What's Brent? What did Brent say? Is why? Why is my wife agreeing? You should paint the washer dry to look more like C3PO and R2D2. Yes, sure. Um, Tommy. Oh, you're you're clarifying. No, I was listening to the shared experience. You was liking it to the shared experience when it's okay to be loud. Oh, sure you were, Tommy. Sure you were. Um. You had to do, Gary Lau say, oh, you're in Pacific Rim? <laughs> Gary Lau writes, I've had the displeasure of seeing myself on the big screen for a screening of Pacific Rim. Uh, you never realize how big your head is. You know, film and TV, it adds, it adds 10 pounds. And that's the truth. Film and TV adds 10 pounds to you. So your head's not that, not that big. Not as big as my head, probably. Um, no, I'm not drunk, honey. I wish I was, though. I wish I was, Anna. Uh, Anton, you won a special showing of cats as an advanced screening, and your wife likes the animals' cats, and you were afraid to tell her that the movie sucks, and she fell asleep, and so did I. Ha ha ha. So you did win, really, at the end. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, sorry. That's right. How much stream do we have left? You know what? We're almost at the end. Uh, Noah, yeah, do your laundry. It's still, it's still in the laundry there. Uh... You'll get it. Wade, you're going to get your Kylo Ren ensemble. Probably by the time, you know, the next trilogy of movies comes out. It's, it's going to be a while. Ray's in the house. Uh, pair character turning around, waving his hand, saying, Hey, you, while lowering his glasses. That's a meme. That I don't understand. But hey, Ray, how's it going? How are you? Uh, Anna McSell. Anime, X, Anime XL. You met Dan Aykroyd a while back when promoting his wine. I asked him to sign his name with the quote, Get her! And he said, Get her? It took him a few seconds and was like, Oh, get her. Yeah. It's probably one of the funniest lines in Ghostbusters at the very beginning. I've got a plan. Three, two, one, get her! It's awesome. Um, yes. Uh, we're going to go through. Now, it is 9.13. Uh, it's been, holy crap. How, how long have we been going on for? An hour and 45. Wow. Thank you so much, everybody. This is this is my favorite. This is when I lose track of what's going on because I'm having a lot of fun interacting with you. So thank you so much. Uh, I have one more thing. If if we can open it up right now and then we'll, we'll, we'll close it off uh, if you want. This, this came in the mail today. Uh, if you look over here, you'll notice I have a bunch of... Uh, these are Eagle Moss Hero Collectors, Battlestar Galactica, Capital Ships. I've got the OG Galactica. I've got the Pegasus from the 2004 reboot, the Galactica from the reboot. 
uh, the, the Valkyrie from the reboot, a uh, base star from the original series, and up there I have the original series uh, a Colonial Viper, the Mark 1, no, sorry, the Mark 2 from 2004 reboot, the Mark 7, the um, the Heavy Duty Raptor, and of course the, uh, uh, the Cylon Raider from Blood and Chrome. And this came in the mail today because I had ordered this a while ago and I was so happy. This came. Boop, boop, boop. It's this. Right here. This is the... Uh, this is a blood and chrome viper. So I think this is a this is a Mark One. Um, so let's let's. Here we go. Do this. Thanks, Regan. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Okay, here we go. This is what I love about it. So this is this is just the viper. It just says it's the viper. The Colonial Viper uh, from Blood and Chrome. Now, Blood and Chrome was a little uh, um, side movie, I guess you could call it. Uh, and it chronicled uh, one of the missions that a young William Ad Bill Adama had when he was Husker, uh, a young pilot. And this was his Viper uh, and the story behind it. Now, this is what I love about Hero Collectible. You get this great mini magazine, basically, and it's numbered. So this is number 15 in the line here and you get an amazing amount of of background uh from of, of the 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 craft itself the profile and then the some really nice behind the scenes uh information uh pictures and some stories from from designers right so here you go so this is the viper mark three then an upgraded version of the battle proven mark ii viper the mark three saw combat in the later years of the first cylon war and so it's awesome. They'll do a recounting, like they have some uh, screen grabs from uh, the movie itself, right? And then there you go. You've got that revamp, and then the the uh, some some behind the scenes stuff in terms of the design elements and and what they were looking for uh, when they were doing it. And of course, there you go. You have. An interview or, or a writing from Doug Dexler. So, and again, of course, I love this. This is a great insignia. It's great. I love it. Uh, I'm just going to do this here. Oh, thanks, Ray. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, the PSN ad. Yeah, sorry. I moved my Ray. I moved my my PS5 down here, and I've been trying to just get it to work on Twitch, and so I haven't been like just gaming, gaming. So it's been driving me nuts. So I apologize for that. I'll, I'll get that to you. I'll get it out to you. Okay. So here it is. Let's open this up. Let's see what's on the inside. There. This is this is what I love. Just the attention, the detail. Oh. Let's bring it in here a little bit. Just it comes like this. There's a little little stand, display stand. It's got a nice, nice, nice bait uh, base. It's a nice weight to it. Is what I'm saying. Uh, they have a clear. It's a mount that the Viper will sit on. And that's it. It's it's very simple packaging, but it's great. But this is look at this is stunning. Like just. The paint scheme is great. The uh, look at how detailed it is. The little the engine components. Uh, it looks like an actual like car engine in there with the, the tubes and the exhaust. Uh, the back profile, the twin engine, the triple engines. Look at that. It's just and it's it's got a nice heavy weight to it too, right? This isn't it's it's this is metal. There there are bits of die cast metal right there, which are fantastic. Uh let's focus, focus, stupid thing. Uh the autofocus. There we go. There we go. Look at that. And then the front profile. I mean it's got the classic lines of the OG 
uh, Colonial Viper. But they've, they've, I mean, that's what I love. It's, it's obviously in world. It's very inspired by the original, but it's, it's a fresh take on it, and it just feels so natural. And it's got little details. Like I don't know if you can see these little, uh, these little fins right, right there, the little antennae, whatever. They're there. Um, it's really, really cool. Like I love that. I love, I love. You know, as a kid. I always, always wanted, uh, loved ships like that. Like, just always loved it. There we go. Um, oh, thanks so much, Joe. Thanks for joining. Thanks. Um, Jeps, 1973, my brother and I got OG Galactica toys as kids. Yeah, within one minute, he broke one of our guns on his Cylon ship. I kept my ships away from him and wouldn't even play with them. Yeah, that's like when you, when that trust gets burned. I get it. I get it. But uh, it's it's going to happen. Um, Blood and Chrome. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh-huh. LOL. What is it? Because I haven't added you on PS, P, you know, PSN or whatever that is. Come on. What are you five years old? Okay, I'll do it after this live stream. I'll do that, Ray. I'll do it. Um. <laughs> right on. Uh, yeah, the old die diecast toys were the shizzle back in the day, right? Because they were nice and heavy, and they lasted forever. But then they realized they were using lead. <laughs> Or lead paint on a lot of them and that was really unhealthy uh, and then they they also realized that hey plastic is so much cheaper let's just use plastic um, now this is the base and the the stand it just sort of pops onto here just like that there you go and then it's beautifully designed just to be displayed like that there you go there you go so it's it's right there it's on display this beautiful thing so i have a number of ships yeah it, this is something that i've really gotten into uh, especially the battlestar galactica stuff um again i love capital ships i love seeing those battle stars lined up there it's really cool um i i actually we have star wars x-wing and star wars armada and those are, I love those too, just because in the, the board game that you play, the, the detail and the miniatures are, are fantastic. And I love that too. Um, Hero Collectibles, they also have a line of starships, like from Star Trek. And uh, I've been holding off. I've been very good, been holding off on those. But, uh, you know, uh, maybe a couple might find their way into the geeky basement in a while. Sorry, babe. <laughs> Sorry, Anna. But truth. Um... Daz, 416, late, but hey, Paul. Hey, Daz, how are you? How are you? Thanks, and thank you for the happy Father's Day wish. Uh, and if you're a dad, happy Father's Day to you. Um, <laughs> uh, now you're asking, okay, Melissa K., you can't quite make it out, but is there a call sign on the Viper? Uh, now this should be Husker. It should be William Adamas. It's got the number, it's got the tail number on here, five... Five seven nine zero zero one, written on here. Um, usually the call sign is under the canopy. If there's, if it's gonna be, it says rescue. Uh, the small printed damage jet. No, danger jet. Uh, yeah, blast danger. I don't see it. I don't see his call sign. Uh, I see the number there, uh, but I think if we look at, you know, just maximum magnification, uh, this is supposed to be 
Well, it says here, call sign Husker. It was stenciled below the cockpit, uh, but I don't see it below the cockpit. I don't see it anywhere. I don't see it here. So they don't have it. But according to this booklet, according to this booklet, it is, it is Husker. It is Husker. Uh, hold on. So according to the booklet, it is William, Lieutenant William Adana, Adama Husker. He was called Husker because he's a farm boy. So yeah, they don't have, it doesn't say anything about where it's at, but the, the, the call sign, the numbers are the same. So even though his name is not on it, I'm assuming it's his Viper right there. Uh, because the book told me so. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Viper Mark One is still on, wait, sorry. Brent, you're saying that you see the micro, Viper Mark One is still on pre-order. Ooh, well, let's take a look at that one. I gotta check that out. Uh, just busting your balls, LM, LMAO. Happy Father's Day, bud. Gotta go. Thanks, Ray. Thank you for your donation. <laughs> and thanks for busting my chops. I appreciate that on Father's Day. Thank you. Um, hey, nerd of Marvel and Star Wars and Jurassic World. How are you? Thanks for joining. Um, Epic Gamer, fantastic unboxing Sunday. Thank you for showing off these latest additions to your collection. It's Monday midday for me. So you have to go back to work. Uh, but you'll be back for the next show. Thank you so much for joining in. And thank you, everybody, for joining in. We've hit, we're coming up on a two-hour mark. Um, this time flew by. I love, Sunday's fast becoming one of my favorite days of the week just because I get to do this and unbox really cool stuff and chat with all of you. So uh, please uh, continue to join me. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, please do at least hit that notification bell and you'll know. But every Sunday around 7.30, I'm gonna be unboxing some more geeky stuff. Um, if you want uh, on, on the replay of this, leave a comment. And um, just like if you have any suggestions of what you want me to unbox in the basement, any requests, special requests, by all means, leave them there and we'll take that into account. And uh, hopefully, yeah, we'll be able to unbox some more things. But until then, uh, for all the dads out there, happy Father's Day. I hope you enjoyed the day. hope it was as restful and as beautiful as it was for me. Uh, and for everybody else out there too, thank you so much uh, for, for joining in. I hope you have a great evening or a great morning or a great day. Uh, stay safe, be healthy, get your vaccination if you haven't already. Wear a mask, keep wearing that mask until it's safe not to. Keep washing your hands, stop touching your face, and take care. Okay, see you. There's that awkward moment where you thought you hit the button and you didn't, and then you just kind of... <laughs>